Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisance as always, Shri Prabhupada. Welcome to Voice from Morning Bhagavatam class. This morning we will be discussing from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 12, Verse 21, and the chapter is entitled The Birth of Emperor Prakshit. The class will be given by His Holiness Chandramali Swami. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you and all glories to Shri Prabhupada. Ah, uh, go. My obeisance is to all the devotees, to Kalpa Trubhishya, Kripa Sindhu Vebhaja, Dhanam Pavane Bhyo, Vaishnava Bhyo, Namaho Namaha, Hare Krishna Anasuya. Um, Hare Krishna hear? Maharaj. Is, is, is my audio clear? Yes, Maharaj, very, very clear. And on, on my side, it's definitely very clear. Maj, I would like to ask you, it's a pretty long purport. Would you like someone to read it? Yeah, I was also thinking like that. Somebody who knows how to read, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, Marge. Marge, would you like to start with the Sanskrit and then I can read for you, Marge? Yeah, okay. Um, and then I'll, I will say, if, uh, I think there's a, a preface to the actual text and I'll just read that also. Yes, Marj. Whenever you want me to stop and start, you can just let me know, Marj. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam first canto chapter 12 the birth of Emperor Pariksha verse 21 Danvinam agranir esa tuyas charju nayor dwayaho utasa eva durdarsa samudra eva dustaraha amongst great bowmen this child, which is referring to Marge Prickshit, will be as good as Arjun. He will be irresistible as fire and unsurpassable as the ocean. I'll read the first uh, paragraph. In history, there are two Arjuns, Arjunas. One is Kartavirya Arjun, the king of Haihaya. The other is the grandfather of the child. Both are both the Arjunas are famous for their bowmanship, and the child Pariksit is foretold to be equal to both of them, particularly in fighting. A short description of the Pandava Arjuna is given below. Please take it over. Thank you, Maharaj. Pandava Arjuna, the great hero of the Bhagavad Gita, he is the Kshatriya son of Maharaj Pandu. Queen Kunti, Dev, Queen Kunti Devi could call for any one of the demigods, and thus she called Indra, and Arjuna was born by him. Arjuna is therefore a plenary part of the heavenly king Indra. He was born in the month of Falguna, February, March, and therefore he is called Falguni. When he appeared as the son of Kunti, his future greatness was proclaimed by air messages and all the important personalities from different parts of the universe, such as the demigods, the Gandharvas, the Adityas from the sun globe, the Rudras, the Vasus, the Nagas, the different rishis, sages of importance, and the Apsuras, the society girls of heaven, all attended the ceremony. The Apsuras pleased everyone by their heavenly dances and songs. Vasudev, the father of Lord Krishna, and the maternal uncle of Arjuna sent his, sent his priest representative Kashyapa to purify Arjuna by all the prescribed samskaras or reformatory processes. His samskara of being given a name was performed in the presence of the rishis, residents of Shatashringa. He married four wives, Draupadi, Subhadra, Chitrangada, and Ulupi from whom he got four sons of the names Shotakirti, Abhimanyu, Babrubahana, and Iravan, respectively. During his student life, he was entrusted to study under the great professor Dronacharya, 
along with other Pandavas and the Kurus. But he excelled everyone by his studious intensity, and Dronacharya was especially attracted by his disciplinary affection. Dronacharya accepted him as a first grade scholar and loved heartily to bestow upon him all the blessings of military science. He was so ardent a student that he used to practice bowmanship even at night. And for all these reasons, Professor Dronacharya was determined to make him the topmost bowman of the world. He passed very brilliantly the examination in piercing the target, and Dronacharya was very pleased. Royal families at Manipur and Tripura, uh, and Tripura are descendants of Arjuna's son, Babruvahana. Arjuna saved Dronacharya from the attack of a crocodile, and the Acharya, being pleased with him, revealed him, rewarded him with the weapon of the name Brahmashiras. Maharaj Drupad was inimical toward Dronacharya. And thus, when he attacked the Acharya, Arjuna got him arrested and brought him before Dronacharya. He besieged a city of the name Ahichatra, belonging to the Maharaj, belonging to Maharaj Drupad. And after taking it over, he gave it to Dronacharya. The confidential treatment of the weapon Brahmashiras was explained to Arjuna. And Dronacharya was promised by Arjuna that he would use the weapon if necessary when he, Dronacharya, personally became an enemy of Arjuna. By this, the Acharya forecasted the future battle of Kurukshetra in which Dronacharya was on the opposite side. Maharaj Drupad, although defeated by Arjuna, on behalf of his professor, Dronacharya decided to hand over his daughter Drup Draupadi to his young com combatant, but he was disappointed when he heard the false news of, of Arjuna's death in the fire of Shalak house, intrigued by Duryodhan. He therefore arranged for Draupadi's personal selection of a groom who could pierce the eyes of a fish hanging on the ceiling. This trick was especially made because only Arjuna could do it and he was successful in his desire to hand over his equally worthy daughter to Arjuna. Arjuna's brothers were at that time living incognito under agreement with Duryodhan, under agreement with Duryodhan, and Arjuna and his brothers attended the meeting of Draupadi's selection in the dress of Brahmanas. When all the Kshatriyas kings assembled saw that a poor Brahmana had been garlanded by Draupadi for her lord, Sri Krishna disclosed his identity to Balaram. He met Ulupi at Haridwar, and he was attracted by that girl belonging to Nagalok, and thus Iravan was born. Similarly, he met Chitrangada, a daughter of the king of Manipur, and thus Babruvahan was born. Lord Sri Krishna made a plan to help Arjuna to kidnap Subhadra, a sister of Sri Krishna, because Baladev was inclined to hand her over to Duryodhan. Yudhisthir also agreed with Sri Krishna, and thus Subhadra was taken by force by Arjun, and then married to him. Subhadra's son is Abhimanyu, the father of Prakshit Maharaj, the posthumous child. Arjuna satisfied the fire god by setting fire to the Kandava forest, and thus the fire god gave him one weapon. Indra was angry when the fire was set in the Kandava forest, and thus Indra, assisted by all other demigods, began fighting with Arjuna for his great challenge. They were defeated by Arjuna, and Indra they returned to his, to his heavenly kingdom. Arjuna also promised all protection to one Mayasura, and the, and the latter presented him one valuable conch shell celebrated as the Devadatta. Similarly, he received many other valuable weapons from Indradev when he was satisfied to see his chivalry. When Maharaj Yudhisthira was disappointed in defeating the king of Magad, Jarasan, he, it was Arjuna only who gave King Yudhisthira all kinds of, of assurances. And thus Arjuna, Bhim, and Lord Krishna started for Magad to kill Jarasan. When he went out to bring, bring all other kings of the world under the subjection of the Pandavas, 
as was usual after the coronation of every emperor. He conquered the country named Kalinda and brought in subjugation King Bagadatta. Then he traveled through countries like Antagiri, Ulukapura, and Modapura and brought under subjugation all the rulers. Sometimes he underwent severe type of penances and later on he was rewarded by Indradev. Lord Shiva also wanted to try the strength of Arjuna and in the form of an aborigin, Lord Shiva met him. There was a great fight between the two and at last Lord Shiva was satisfied with him and disclosed his identity. Arjuna prayed to the Lord in all humbleness and the Lord being pleased with him presented him the Pashupata weapon. He acquired many other important weapons from different demigods. He received Dandastra from Yamaraj, Pasha, Pashastra from Varuna, and Andardanastra from Kuber, the treasurer of the heavenly kingdom. Indra wanted him to come to the heavenly kingdom, the Indraloka, planet beyond the moon planet. In that planet, he was cordially in received by the local residents and he was awarded reception in the heavenly parliament of Indradev. Then he met Indradev, who not only presented him with his Vajra weapon, but also taught him the military and musical science as used in the heavenly planet. In one sense, Indra is the real father of Arjuna and therefore indirectly he wanted to entertain Arjuna with the famous society girl of heaven, Urvashi, the celebrity beauty. The society girls of heaven are lusty and Urvashi was very eager to contact Arjuna, the strongest human being. She met him in his room and expressed her desires, but Arjun sustained his unimpeachable character by closing his eyes before Urvashi, addressing her as the mother of the Kuru dynasty and placing her in the same in the category of his mother's Kunti, Madri, and Sachi Devi, wife of Indra Devi. Indra Dev, sorry. Disappointed, Urvasi cursed Arjuna and left. In the heavenly planet, he also met the great celebrated ascetic Lomasha and prayed to him for the protection of Maharaj Yudhisthira. When his inimical, when his inimical cousin Duryodhan was under the clutches of the Gandharvas, he wanted to save him and requested the Gandharvas to release Duryodhan, but the Gandharvas refused. And thus he fought with him and got Duryodhan released. When all the Pandavas lived incognito, he presented himself in the court of King Virat as a eunuch and was employed as the musical teacher of Uttara, his future daughter-in-law, and was known in the Virat court as the Brihanala. As Brihanala, he fought on behalf of Uttara, the son Uttara, the son of King Virat, and thus defeated the Kurus in the fight incognito. His secret weapons were finally kept in the custody of Somi tree and he ordered Uttara to get them back. His identity and his father's ident and his brother's identity were later on disclosed to Uttara. Dronacharya was informed of Arjuna's presence in the fight of the Kurus and the Viratas. Later on the battle of Kurukshetra, Arjuna killed many great generals like Karna and others. After the battle of Kurukshetra, he punished Ashwatthama who had killed all the five sons of Draupadi. Then all the brothers went to Bhishmadev. It is due to Arjuna only that the great philosophical discourses of the Bhagavad Gita were again spoken by the Lord on the battle of Kurukshetra. His wonderful acts on the battlefield of Kurukshetra are vividly described in the Mahabharat. Arjuna was defeated, however, by his son Brahu, Brahubahana, at Manipur and felt unconscious when Ulupi saved him. After the disappearance of Lord Krishna, the message was brought by Arjuna to Maharaj Yudhisthira. Again, Arjuna visited Dwarka and all the widows, widow wives of Lord Krishna lamented before him. He took them all in the presence of Vasudev and pacified all of them. Later on, when Vasudev passed away, he performed his funeral ceremony in the absence of Krishna. 
while Arjuna was taken was taking all the wives of Krishna to Indraprast, he was attacked on the way, and he could not protect the ladies in his custody. At last, advised by Vyasadeva, all the brothers headed for Mahaprastana. On the way, at the request of his brother, he gave up all important weapons as useless, and he dropped them all in the water. Hare Krishna. Namaste, sir. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, this uh, narration here is just as short for as Prabhupada said into his short description of life of our journey. He was known for many other great and amazing feats. Um, but what makes him so glorious is his intimate connection with his teaching. He, uh, he was so close to Krishna that when he, Krishna actually took the position of his chariot here in the battle of Sri Krishna, when Krishna had decided not to play, he uh, made a proposal between Arjuna and Sri Duryodhana, and he said, uh, one of you can have my armies and one of you can have me. But I am not going to fight whoever takes me. The other, thinking in a very material way, and thinking, well, what is the use of having you if you're not going to fight us to take your army? And he did. And then, uh, and Duna, you know, Krishna said, then, yeah. And Krishna said, yeah, I'm not going to fight them. But then, uh, Arjuna said, well, if you're not going to fight, at least you would be my chariot. <laughs> in order to please his devotee, Krishna accepted that request. And the most amazing thing about this request is that when Arjuna was in trouble, being smashed with the arrows of Bhishma Devi, the invincible, powerful Bhishma Devi, Arjuna was no match for Bhishma Devi. Although we hear the glories of our demon's prowess and how he defeated so many great generals and performed so many Herculean Herculean acts, still he was no match for Bhishma Day and Bhishma Day was determined because he was insulted by Leo and Dramachari that he wasn't fighting to his capacity, so he had promised that he would be much better when he was fighting in his capacity. And Yuna had no virtue. And Krishna did something, he broke his promise. He jumped off the broken chariot, which was smashed by the arrows of the Krishna. And Yuna uh, was already had fallen off. Krishna also fell off. They both fell off. And then Krishna picked up the chariot wheel and then started to charge Krishna. And this Krishna showed. When he proved that verse in the Bhagavad Gita, that he was seven, twenty up to the journey, he will make up the pronunciation. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. I'm sorry for interrupting, Maharaj. It's a, your voice is a little bit scratchy. Can you increase the volume on your end, Maharaj, please? I'm sorry, forgive me, Maharaj. How about that? Is that better? Let me see if, uh, because I'm, I'm getting, yes, I think it's better now, devotees. I've, I've been getting a couple of messages from devotees. I'm just waiting for them to let me know if it's, but yes, much. I think they're saying it's better. Okay, let's try it from there. 
when Bhishma Day was fighting to uh, to destroy our doom, Krishna then decided you know, that he would fulfill his promise to his devotees, which supersedes Krishna risked his own uh, reputation because he had decided, I won't fight, he gave his word. But here was an incident where he could not, you know, not fight because Arjuna would have been destroyed, no question about it by this event. In order to protect his devotees, the Lord told my promise. After being knocked off the chariot by Bhishma, the Lord picked up the book of the chariot and was charged Bhishma. And that story, we, uh, we already discussed that in the ninth chapter of this same first chapter. But what is what was interesting was uh, that, uh, you know, Krishna is criticizes for saying things and not following it. But when he breaks his promise, it's always for a higher principle. And in this case, the higher principle always is protection of his devotee. So uh, as devotees of Krishna, we should also understand that when you become a devotee of the Lord, the Lord promises to give you protection. He gives you two, two aspects of protection. One, he protects you from physical harm. And two, he protects you from falling down into the material energy. In other words, if you're seriously executing devotional service, even if you slip, the Lord will arrange for you to get back up again and protects you from uh, falling down and staying with the material energy. That protection is what is being referred to in general, but he also gives protection to the body, but not always, because sometimes uh, there's a higher principle involved with that, that he wants that the body to come back to him and go back to back to that. So he allows that body, the body to leave his body under certain circumstances. That doesn't mean he's not giving protection, he's protecting the soul in that case. What we see here, how the Lord also protects his devotees from the dangers of the material world. As far as our Arjuna is concerned, he was uh, very dear to Krishna. He had an intimate friendship relationship with him. He sits with Krishna at, at the dinner table, they share food together. He talks to Krishna very intimately and openly. They also lie on the same bed together. They're very close, closely related. So we can't imagine the, the great uh, quality that Arjuna has acquired in order to attract the Supreme Personality of Godhead completely in loving devotion of children. So here we're hearing about some of his interesting exploits. <laughs> when he will, whenever, when the Pandavas had to uh, remain in exile for you know, 13 years, um, after 12 years, he remained in exile. The last year, the 13th year, he had to remain in exile in incognito. And because if they were discovered while they were in Cognito, then there would be another 13 years of exile. So they went to the um, kingdom of Zurat. And Arjuna became a dance teacher for the, for the daughter of Zurat. Luna became a cook. I can't remember, I can't remember what the other thing is. They all had their own disguises. Now they remain. And then what there is here, there was this marriage of Jokadi. And the Pandavas all showed up in the marriage that would disguise themselves as brothers. So I was here, one of the hand of Jokadi, and then at the chagrin of all of these powerful doctors, and they were defeated by the brothers. And no one knew it was actually a dream. And we managed to remain you know, incognito during that particular event. 
So, uh, and then Barack, after one year, he wanted to uh, give his daughter, uh, Utsara, uh, to Arjuna uh, for marriage. He said he was pleased with Arjuna. But Arjuna said, I, how can you do that? She was my daughter. You cannot marry my daughter. So it's understood that the relationship between the spiritual master or a teacher is like uh, a son to a daughter, a father to a daughter, a father to a son. So it was, it was considered to be against the religious principle to marry one's disciple or to marry one's uh, student because it's in the role of the father. Therefore, in order to satisfy Virat, King Virat, he said, I have a son, and you, you can give your daughter to my son, and he did. Luthera mm -hmm. became the wife of uh, Abhimanyu. But then Abhimanyu was killed unfairly on the battlefield by the assembly of very powerful general who surrounded him and didn't allow him to break out when they were all attacking him. And he was unfairly killed. And that left Uthara as a widow. She was pregnant at the time. And uh, later on, that child was born, and that child was Maharaj Pariksha. So we we'll know it's a, so Maharaj Pariksha was actually the grandson of Arjuna. And Maharaj Pariksha also. Well, we're, we're hearing about his glories in this particular section of the Srimad Bhagavatam. But it was interesting to note that uh, when Arjuna heard what happened to his son in law, uh, no, his son, his son Abhimanyu, he, uh, he decided to take revenge against the uh, Drista Junior, I think it was, was it Drista Junior? I remember Drista Junior. I can't remember that power thing, lawyer, what was his name? Starts with a Junior. I don't think Drista Junior. Marge, is this Ashwatthama? Ashwatthama? No, it was, was Jayadrat. Jai oh, Jayadrat. Yes, yes. They, King of Sindhu. Right. That is what I was doing. And so, um, and Arjuna made a vow because during the battle, at the, when the sun goes down, the battle stops. So at that time, the, the soldiers desist fighting and they sit together in the evening, one of the leaders, and then they begin their fighting the next day. So no one fights beyond sunrise or sunset. So Arjuna made a vow that I will kill Jayadara tomorrow in the battle, and if I, if I fail, I will enter into the fire. In other words, I will give up my life. <laughs> so uh, when the Kurus heard that that, 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 that this was, that was going to happen, they were thinking we have to protect Dryadra by all means, because if uh, Arjuna enters into the fire, then we will easily win the battle because it's because of him we cannot win. And so um, Krishna was driving the chariot and the battle was going on. And so the Kurus were sending many, many phalanxes of soldiers to fight with Arjuna. And they were keeping Jayadra in a very far section of the battlefield. And you have to understand that battlefield was huge. It says that it was about 18 miles long. <laughs> It was a huge battlefield. You can imagine 640 million soldiers were killed and many hundreds of thousands were missing. But there were many more soldiers on that battlefield. And so protecting Jayadra on the other end, um, they, were, they were sending phalanxes of soldiers to fight with Arjuna. And Jun, Arjuna was fighting like he never fought before. He was cutting through all of these soldiers. 
But Krishna told them, don't waste time with all these soldiers. Get to Jayadra. So Arjuna did that, and he was uh, he went through all of these phalanxes, looking, trying to get Jayadra. So the, but the Kurus had sent their best men to protect Jayadra, knowing that if he were, if he if Arjuna didn't kill him that day, Arjuna would have had to enter the fire. And so the fighting went on, and the time was going on, and then the sun was starting to go down, and it was going down and going down and going down. But Krishna did something. <laughs> Here's how he saved the devotee again. He he said he, he presented a cloud in the sky. He, 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 by his power, he created a cloud in the sky which looked like that the sun had already set. So, and then the sun didn't really set. It was hiding behind this cloud, which everyone thought that the sun had set. And so when the sun apparently set, everyone said, oh, wow, the sun is set. Arjuna has to enter into the fire. And they all upraised their sword and they started to cheer. Arjuna will now enter into the fire. And But what Krishna had done is that he hid the sun and the sun was still above the horizon. And then Krishna told him, okay, now go for him. <laughs> so, Arjuna went and killed Jayadra. And when the Kuru saw that, they said, Arjuna's cheating. <laughs> the sun is already set. He's broken his promise. But then Krishna took the cloud away and everyone could see the sun was still just above the horizon. But Krishna did that in order to protect his devotees. And you see, there's another example of how Krishna saved Arjuna from giving up his life. So this is one of many. So uh, what is what is glorious is here is the intimate relationship. And you go down to the end of the narration, you find that uh, Arjuna apparently was defeated by his own son, Badru Vanhana, who was a very, very powerful warrior who was given to his father. He was the son of Ulu Uluki. And he was very, very powerful. I think he was the son of the Uluki or Viravan. That's Titangana. Yeah, yeah, he was the son of Uluki. And um, apparently, Arjuna was defeated. You can read about that pastime. There's one particular narration that I came across reading about that fight. How when Arjuna wanted to, uh, on behalf of King Yudhisthira, establish Yudhisthira as the undefeatable, uh, un, what's the word, unchallenged monarch to become the king of the world, they had to prove that by sending the, um, the uh, challenge for us. The, the program was that you send a challenge horse out to the different kingdoms, and anyone who captures the horse will have to fight with the soldiers who are accompanied the horse. And everyone let the horse go except in that kingdom of Bahu in Ravana. He captured the horse, and then Arjuna challenged his own son to a fight. And Arjuna lost the fight. <laughs> it doesn't explain how he lost the fight. He was just somehow or other defeated by his son. And it was amazing. This was at Manipur. And Ulupi saved him, his, his wife, and brought him back to consciousness. But then later on, and this is also very significant in terms of our understanding how spiritual principles play themselves out. Arjuna apparently was trying to protect Krishna's wives who were going to enter Prasa. But there was a band of cowherdmen who attacked Arjuna. And they defeated Arjuna, and he couldn't protect the ladies in his custody. Later on, he talks about them to Yudhisthira, how he failed about them. I have my mighty arms. I still have my Gandiva bow. I have my quiver with arrows. 
But because Lord Sri Krishna has disappeared from the planet, I was not able to protect the wine. So here is an interesting point is that, and we should all take note of this, that when Krishna empowers one, one can do wonderful things on his behalf. When Krishna withdraws that power, you can't do anything. <laughs> you can't even lift your finger if he decides not to allow you to do that. This is the principle of devotion that a devotee always knows that behind everything is the prowess, the power, the mercy, the glory, and the, the protection of Krishna. So a devotee always knows that they always depend on Krishna. One realizes that anything one can do is simply by the grace of the Lord coming to the disciplic succession. And here Arjuna is showing this by his own example. Krishna used him. It's actually Krishna's arrangement just to show the world that, yeah, the glory of Arjuna is actually coming from me. <laughs> Although Arjuna is glorious because he was selected to be that power to uh, you know, bring about religious principles by defeating irreligion. Still, you know, behind it was the will of Krishna. So we should understand this in our present day situation. Lord Chaitanya has said that this, that his uh, <clears throat> name will be chanted in every town and village throughout the world. And therefore that will happen. There will be no question about that. It's not a matter of conjecture or not a matter of theory. It's just a matter of time when the Lord's name will be chanted throughout the entire world. And Krishna consciousness is spread everywhere. But the question remains, <clears throat> are we willing to become the instrument of the Lord in his uh, desire to purify the world? That is our position. Some of us will take it up, others will not. But the more who take it up, they also get the glory because just as Arjuna gets all the credit for everything that Krishna did, Ultimately, the devotees will become glorious as Lord Chaitanya uses his devotees to spread Krishna consciousness all around the world. So it's just a matter of time. And Prabhupada said, if this generation doesn't do it, the next generation will do it. And if they don't do it, the next generation. So whoever is willing to, to sacrifice uh, whatever they think is good for them, and simply take up the mission of the Lord and preach Krishna consciousness whenever it's possible. Then we'll be one, we'll be guaranteed to go back home, back to Godhead, and we'll be seen as a true follower of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Okay, so we'll stop here. The glory of Arjun is unlimited as the ocean. Uh, the glories of the pure devotees are just as vast as that same motion. Thank you so much, Marge, for this wonderful class on Arjuna. And actually, as I was um, reading the purport for you, I was really amazed by how detailed Sri Prabhupada went into Arjuna. And I was thinking, wow, it'd be so nice if we could have that same thing for all the other great personalities. It's so informative. I felt it was very informative. Thank you, Maharaj. We'd like to ask the devotees if you have any questions, any comments, any uh, you know, uh, clarification. Please uh, do raise your hand. We have about 24 participants today. A really nice group. And I will call upon it that way I don't miss anyone. Um, just going down. Okay, go ahead. Prakshit has a question. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble Let's go to the gallery and then I'll stop the sharing. Yes, Maharaj, I'll do it right now. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances of God to the power of fun. Very nice lecture. Um, Actually, as you and I were talking this morning, 
about uh, the progress of Kali Yuga and the chanting of the holy name. I, if you don't mind, uh, uh, I'd like you to, uh, I'm going to ask you to comment on the holy name and the effect it's having in Kali Yuga at this point. It was we, What we talked about, the two of us discussed, was that she was saying that she knew or she had heard the Kali Yuga's uh, progress of things getting worse uh, has been checked by the holy name. Otherwise, things would be a lot worse now. And and that's what I wanted you to comment about. You know, maybe just more detail oh, yeah. about it. Yeah, Prabhupada said because of the purpose of the devotees in the Kali Yuga, then everything hasn't been destroyed yet. <laughs> so, it's the fact. Mm. Prabhupada also made a similar okay. comment. Not the exact word, but he gave that same indication. Yeah. Mm. This age is so bad. Everybody's simple. Everybody. <laughs> mm. Very bad age. What goes on in the material world is material life. It's just uh, uh, this uh, various types of sense gratification. The goal of life is to take up uh, the process of self-realization. How many people are actually doing that? We have a pious, and that's very really nice. But piety is still in the, within the material energy and still allows one to take another birth. So therefore, one who actually takes up devotional service becomes empowered by the Lord. Um, to um, you know, to execute the process of devotional service. So the world is quite simple, very very simple. In the name of uh, various types of ideas on how to become happy in this world, they've gotten more and more into a into a world with a simple activity. Uh, we could sit here all day and just name different kinds of simple activities, but I don't think that's, we don't need to really do that. But we are, we're seeing it more and more. Just like lying. I was reading last night in the Srimad Bhagavatam that everybody finds some way to twist the truth in order to uh, facilitate their own desires. Sometimes we call it sophistry. Sophistry means half truth and half half uh, lie. Uh, but that goes on. Okay. All all advertisement is all is just a, just an, a whole idea of exploitation of people. Advertising is exploiting people to get them to be convinced to buy something they don't really need. Really, they create the, the need. And then they uh, offer the product simply through this process of advertising. It's called it's a sense of mind control. In different ways. <clears throat> so yeah, so the whole society is quite quite corrupt, <clears throat> quite lost. Only for the devotees, uh, because of the presence of the devotees. Kali Yuga is, hasn't reached, uh, you know, its maximum <laughs> level of degradation, but it's heading down. So if the intensity of the chanting of the Holy Name by the devotees increases, then Kali Yuga yeah. will be slowed down even more? Mm -hmm. I don't know. And they even reverse. The golden age of Lord Chaitanya will come, which is 10,000 years. It's already started. It started with the, with the appearance of Sri Chaitanya. But it's meant to increase in quality until it reaches perfection. So for the next 5,000 years, Probably uh, Lord Chaitanya's movement will continue to increase. 
once it reaches 5,000 years, and after some time, it will start to diminish. And for the next 5,000 years, it will start to gradually decline. And that is the 10,000 years. Thank you very much, Lord. Yeah, Lord Chaitanya, we march on the house of John Kasi, the power of Harinam Sankar. Because he was personally present, but then we can, then you might also say that Lord Chaitanya is still personally present. Thank you, Marj, for sharing that. That was a powerful question, and we got more answers to that question. So thank you for asking that question. Any questions from devotees? Any clarification? Any, uh, you know, uh, comment that you would like to add? Please um, do raise your hand, and I will call upon you. Marge, one question that came to my mind as uh, as we were reading the purport is, uh, Shushu Prabhupada, you know, in a, in a gist, I think, gave a very nice um, overview of Arjuna's um, power in the presence of Krishna. You know, he, in, I, to me, it was more like more of achievements. He, you know, he achieved this, he achieved that. But at the same time, Maharaj, we also have heard that the Pandavas, they went through so much austerity they spend, I think, more time in the forest than in the palace. So to what's coming to my mind, Marge, is, you know, they have been sheltered by the Lords. You know, they have been, you know, they have been loved and protected by the Lord, going through so much austerity, you know, it, you're always being exiled, been sent, you know, being killed and being murdered or whatever. At the same time, there's so much achievement. So Marge, is it safe to say, or, you know, that, that one who goes through so much, you know, a uh, Hadivodi who goes through so much austerity in Krishna consciousness also achieves or is able to live a, a glorious life? <laughs> Glory, that's a, that's a nebulous word. We have to really get defined. We have to define that in a more specific way. The life of a devotee is already glorious. But you might say glorious in different ways. One, the sacrifice they may Look at Prabhupada's life. He was, his life is glorious in two aspects. The personal sacrifices he made in order to begin the movement and to carry on the movement and the achievements that he did during that time. And there were two aspects to that. So you see also in great souls, they make personal sacrifice. Look what Arjuna did in order to become a great archer. So he was practicing archery even at night when he won the complete praise of him. So if you want to really, you know, define what is success, it comes by austerity. Austerity means giving up what I like for somebody for something I am. Or giving up what I want for something I am. And one cannot necessarily have to make their own choice in that area. One can consult their spiritual master if they decide to take up some personal austerity and get approval, blessings from the spiritual master. I would say that would be, you know, necessary. Or one can go to the spiritual master and say, I want to do something to spread Christian practice. In any case, the blessings of a great, a great soul is important. So yeah, austerity is the wealth of the Brahmin class, as it mentions, because it takes one off the bodily flesh, puts one on the, onto the spiritual platform. But then from the spiritual platform, we can go onto the transcendental platform. 
That's when one is fully observing the motion of time. Thank you, Maharaj. And, and as you're speaking, I, that is true, Maharaj. I, I was actually reflecting on um, uh, the life being glorious in the sense of um, a successful spiritual life, because sometimes I think as um, devotees, you know, we, we, how, how can we, I'm lost with words, <laughs> sorry, Marge, austerity and spiritual, you know, and successful spiritual life to one's mind, they will think, but why do I have to go through so much austerity just to worship the Lord, right? You know, and then they think, um, and you know, like we, like we've heard that in Krishna consciousness, Krishna takes stuff away from us. <laughs> So how can we uh, really understand, Maharaj, the importance of austerity to have a successful spiritual life? Because, it, because that word seems to be like, I'm going to go the reverse direction. Well, in this age, the recommended austerity, which is also known as yajna, is sank sankatanya. Yajna sankirtana praya yajna yajna that's the austerity we should become absorbed in chanting. 16, we have to understand Prabhupada's instructions when he said 16 rounds. You have to understand that's not the maximum. That's just to get you situated. The idea is to chant always. That was Prabhupada, that is Prabhupada's intention. You need, because you know, Bishwanath Chakravarti Thakur clarifies that point in one statement where he says, if you chant every day, you'll, you'll come to the point of chanting all the way. So that means you keep your numerical vow and you keep chanting every day. But if you're actually chanting, you'll actually want to, you know, chant more. When you get to the point of getting free from the offenses of the, chanting the holy name and you start moving into the area of Nama Bas, then you start to really start to taste that glimmer of the holy name as it's compared to a sun ray breaking through the clouds is uh, enough to inspire a devotee to want to chant more and more. So, yeah, we shouldn't relegate ourselves to 16 rounds. We should try to develop a quality in our chanting, and that quality will help us to naturally want to increase the chant more and more. Thanks, Maharaj. Someone will say, well, I don't have any time for many other things. Well, that might be true up to a certain point, but when if you're tasting the holy name, you'll always find time to chant more. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. There's a somebody give somebody give you something really tasty to eat. You think, oh, that's nice. Give me some more of it. <laughs> There's a nice post here by Dear Krishna, uh, where he said that um, the Supreme Personality of God had said, my dear Lord Brahma, because of material opulence, a foolish person becomes dull-witted and mad. Thus, he has no respect for anyone. Uh, oops, I think I went too far. Shoot, where Krishna, Krishna, oh, there it is. Um, thus, he has no respect for anyone within the three worlds and defies even my authority. To such a person, I show special favor by first taking away all his possessions. <laughs> Shimad Bhagavatam 822-24. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Any question? Hari. Yes, Maharaj, I'm Hari. sorry. Krishna is also called Hari. Hari means one takes away. That's pretty powerful. So, big reminder for us. Any questions from devotees? Any thoughts? 
any reflection. If devotees can turn on their videos as many as possible, please do so, so that we can, Marge can see us and we can see Marge. Yes, Namrata Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna, am I audible? Yes, yeah. you are. Okay. Uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, all glories to the uh, dearest Guru Maharaj and all glories to the assembled devotees. Uh, Maharaj, my question was, in Bhagavad Gita, if we look at the surface, it seems like uh, Arjun is making a valid point that uh, fighting war will cause a great destruction. So for the personal, uh, for his personal, um, you know, family affair, he's dragging entire Aryavrat into the, uh, into this great uh, massacre. But uh, he doesn't realize that this was a sense gratification at a subtle level so even uh, this is this is uh, in the initial part of course krishna made him understand but then uh, sometimes it also happens uh, that in our life may it be karmic or may it be bhakti life we can face such subtle sense gratification so how do we recognize those subtle sense gratification <laughs> look for them <laughs> Why am I doing this to please Krishna or am I doing this from my own? Question, you can question yourself. What is the purpose of my activity? What is the motivation behind my activity? What am I doing? Am I trying to develop my love for Krishna? Am I trying to please Krishna? Am I trying to get purified from the material desires? Or am I trying to <clears throat> somehow or other fulfill my desires by using devotional service as the means to do that? <laughs> Just like prashadam, you know, we like certain types of prashadam, so we also go through that. But then again, the principle is one should accept whatever the, whatever comes by way of natural arrangement. And one lives according to that, then they they detached and that is devotion and service. But if someone says, well, we may not like a certain type of food stuff, but we, when we say, oh, it's prashadam, then automatically we can understand that it's still it's spiritual in nature. First, one may reject food or accept food based on a principle of health, and that that is in another category. But generally, one should do, accept whatever the Lord offers that comes automatically by by providence. That's using that as an example. The spiritual master wants me to do something and I want to do something else. I'm doing what I want to do. That's sexual. Just like Arjuna being instructed by Krishna, but Arjuna's giving, he gave four very solid reasons why he didn't want to fight. And Prabhupada, in the end of the first chapter, give the nice explanation. He says, actually, Ju Arjuna was soft-hearted. He said that the nature of the devotee is to be soft-hearted. And therefore, Arjuna was acting soft-hearted. But still, he said, asocham, anvasocham, sar, pratyavara, nirvasa, saying, gatit sam, 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 gatit and you're speaking like a, a learned person, and these words are really nice, but I must tell you, you're a fool. Because you are lamenting for that which is not lamentable. 
So yeah. So uh, one, therefore, the the highest religious principle is to obey the Supreme Lord. And Arjuna, although he had very nice moral and religious principles, they were in contrary to Krishna's will. Therefore, Krishna said he's acting on the Bhagavad Gita. He's acting for his own sense. Okay, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Was that, was that clear? Hare Krishna. Where? Yeah, thank, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. When you act on your own, in that sense, gratification, if you act for Krishna, or it's devotion and service. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Um, I was just wondering, Guru Maharaj, if, uh, if if it is as a devotee, Arjuna was really at a at an elevated level, but for uh, devotees who are not at such an elevated level, uh, if they don't recognize them, then how will they approach uh, even a guru for that? So that is why I was just wondering, just how do we recognize? Follow the regulatory principle. All the regulative principles keep you within the within the confines of devotional service. That's why they're there. Regulative principles means to get you off the barbie platform. That's all. Not, some of them are not even transcendental, but they get you off the barbie platform. Therefore, they're they're necessary. So learn the regulative principles and follow them. I'm not speaking about the four regulative principles. I'm talking about the 64 regulative principles that are mentioned in the in the Nectar of the Ocean, which Krishna speaks about in the Bhagavatam in the 11th chapter. He condenses those 64 down into 11. I'm sorry. I'm sorry he couldn't down to the 15. <coughs> So we have to know the regulative principles, which make up do's and don'ts. Do this, but don't do that. Okay. So again, we this know, we have to know those regulative principles. Okay. I think again, this comes to austerity, Guru Maharaj. Huh? Again, this yeah. comes to austerity. Yeah, all the regulative principles is a kind of austerity. Okay. Thank you very much. What you want to do for, for what Krishna wants you to do. Huh? Okay, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you very much. So you should understand that what Krishna wants to do, what Krishna wants you to do is beneficial. It's not not it's not in any other category, but Maharaj, there is a question um that came to me and um th this devotee's question is my understanding about austerity. Is, de is detaching oneself from material stuff connect more with Krishna? Like during fasting, we, we lower bodily needs and do more service to Krishna. Is this correct? Yeah, that's one kind of austerity. One kind of austerity. Yeah, it's not a general definition of austerity. It's just one kind of austerity. And how many kinds of austerities are there, Maharaj? Just curious. <laughs> well, there's three categories. There is of the body, there is of the mind, there is of speech. Krishna speaks about that in the 17th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. So each of those three categories have a series of smaller subcategories connected with that. 
you know, austerities of the body, they're about five. Austerities of the mind are about three. Austerities of the speech is about three or four. Yeah. I'm, I'm letting this devotee know your answer, Mark. He's in the office, so I'm trying to <laughs> give him the answer for to, from you, Maharaj. Thank you. Maharaj, and you mentioned Bhagavad Gita chapter 7. Is that a verse that you mentioned, Maharaj? Chapter 17. 17. Yeah, start with verse number 13, I think. 13, 14, and 15. And 16, I think, the austerities of the mind, austerities of the body, austerities of speech. Thank you, Marge. I, I just sent him your um, respond. Any other questions from devotees? Any other thoughts? Any other um, clarification? Please uh, do raise your hand. I'm trying to see if I, I think I heard someone's voice. I don't know whose voice that I'm trying to see that I don't miss anyone. Um, if there are, Sri Devi is thinking so deep. I'm thinking if she's thinking of a question or she wants to. <laughs> I like to pick a new Mataji. <laughs> I'm just listening. I'm so sorry. I got in very late, so I missed the class. I'm fortunate to at least hear the question and answer, so I'm just listening. No problem. Where are you? Uh, Guru Maharaj, I'm in Udupi. Oh, okay. Did you start your treatment yet? Mm-hmm. Okay. Definitely, I'm experiencing that the heel pain has decreased, the swelling in the legs has decreased. I'm so thankful for that because I was so worried about my health. So definitely it's improving. You got doctors there. He's my good friend. He's a nice person. <laughs> I forgot his name. Nitin or something? I forgot his name. Now there's a lady. Who's the head doctor there? Yeah, Shruta. Oh, they changed. I don't know which place you're talking about, Maharaj. I'm at Ponce. Oh, I was thinking of uh, Udupi. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. And I was thinking of Jane Dusan. Oh, Jane. Oh, Udupi and Jane. Okay. Very well, stick with it. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj, I'm experiencing a quick improvement and I'm thankful for that. From tomorrow, I'll try to be regular and join the class at the right time. Okay, I'm going to mark your report card. Yes, Shimati, please go ahead, Mataji. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All rest to Srila Prabhupada. Um, Guru Maharaj, um, so you were talking about if we do stuff for ourselves, that is sense gratification, and if we so, um, but even we think that uh, in, in devotee community or whatever I do like uh, going to temple or associating with devotees. Um, I always feel pleasure and um, uh, and um, looking forward for nice prasadam and nice time, having nice time. So looking like uh, looking forward to that type of uh, company. So is it also comes under sense gratification or um, like? No, it, it's, uh, these are activities of devotional service. Associating with devotees, that's that's one of the regular principles, one of the main regular But if you're trying to enjoy rather than trying to call with the idea to serve, that's one thing. So Krishna consciousness is enjoyable. Prabhupada said, yes, it's enjoyable. If you're enjoying your activities of devotional service. That's in line with Krishna consciousness. If it wasn't enjoyable, who would want to do it? <laughs> it's like, it's, <laughs> but it's in line with what is beneficial, what is necessary. But then if you think, well, I'll only go to the temple if my friend comes so I can talk to her, then that's, <laughs> that's not the right thing.
is good morning. Yeah, in one lecture, I heard that one Prabhu was saying uh, that um, we uh, are you enjoying in Krishna consciousness or are you serving uh, in Krishna consciousness? So, um, so I was thinking since then. Um, so, are we uh, are we really in the serving mood, or or I am I am in the really in the serving mood, or I am trying to enjoy whenever I go to temple um, uh, no. without doing service. <laughs> Yeah, well, that statement is correct. If you're in the serving mood, you will enjoy. Sort of yeah. If you're enjoying mood, you may or not, you may or may not enjoy. Yes, good Krishna. Yeah. Krishna is not, he's not meant for our enjoyment. We're meant to be enjoyed by Krishna. Or when we engage in devotional service, we connect with the internal energy, which is the Radini Shakti, which is the pleasure energy of the Lord. And therefore, we experience happiness. So be in the mood of service, and automatically, it'll become enjoyable. Mm. It's good match. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, good match. And uh, I have one more question, good match. Um, so I see that Arjuna is always uh, becoming an instrument in Krishna's hand. Uh, so, so we ha um, I should also be in that mood, like um, becoming an instrument in our um, in Guru Maharaj's hand or um, Krishna's hand. Yes. So, so can you please um, guide me, Guru Maharaj? Yeah, we can. Uh, we carry out our duties. We we follow our. If you become Krishna conscious, that's the greatest service you can do for the spiritual master. When Prabhupada was asked, and this was in 1975 when he was in Atlanta, Georgia, and there was many book distributors that come from all over the country to be with Prabhupada. And one book distributor asked, Prabhupada. Obviously, he thought he was going to get a particular answer. Yes. He asked, Prabhupada, what pleases you the most? And we also he always hear that Prabhupada said, you know, just distribute my books that pleases you the most. So he asked that question, what pleases you the most? And Prabhupada answered, he said, what pleases the spiritual master the most is that if you love Krishna. So when the devotee, when the, the spiritual master sees <clears throat> the one is making advancement towards loving Krishna, then that is very pleasing to the spiritual master. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. That's more, that's the most pleasing because that's the that's the serve the spiritual master to help. The disciple to come to the stage of loving Krishna. Mm. And whatever else you do is also new. Yeah. It's good, Maj. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Krishna. I really like that question, Srimati. Enjoying Krishna consciousness and serving. Powerful point. Thank you so much for sharing that. It's making me think now. So thank you. <laughs> yes, Mataji, that Prabhu said uh, yeah, sorry, Kana, she can. Makes us all think what is our motivation behind the activity we perform? Yeah. Yeah. If we're willing to serve under any condition, that that is the uh, that is the mood that the devotee should accept, not pick and choose. Well, I like this service, I don't like this service. Whatever is required, the devotee should be eager. Really powerful, Marge. I, I'm sure, I, I know for me, it's making me think. It's so powerful. Thank you for bringing that, sharing that, Srimati. Thank you so much.
and want to thank uh, actually devotees any other questions before we end oh Sri Devi I was psychic see I knew it <laughs> Encouraged by you, Anasuya. Please accept no, my no, no. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to all the devotees. Guru Maharaj, based on the questions itself, I would like to ask this question. Sometimes we are, you know, in a in a sort of a rut or a groove, or we are just coasting along and we are doing our you know usual stuff, routine stuff. But how do we know that we are really making advancement in Krishna consciousness? Like, I'm chanting my 16th round, I'm doing my regulative principle maintenance, I'm doing a little service, but how do I know that that is really helping me to advance and I'm not stuck in a groove where I'm just turning the wheels but not getting anywhere? Well, if you're enthusiastic, that is Lord Bhubha Goswami's First principle, utsaha, and remain enthusiastic. That will bring about, you know, advancement in devotional service. Enthusiasm means that you should always be thinking how to serve. Yeah, just remain enthusiastic. Be eager for service. Be enthusiastic for service. Look how to improve your service. These are all indications of your, your, you're making nice advances. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. My humble obeisance is to you. Don't waste. We, we were always told, no, we should be, every minute, we should be thinking, what can I do now? And if you can't figure out any service to do, just stand our attention <laughs> or read some books. There's always some, some way you can keep yourself occupied in spiritual life. Nice question, Sri Devi Mataji. Thank you so much. Very nice. Thank you, Anisya. <laughs> any other questions from devotees? <clears throat> any other reflection? Any you know clarification? Please uh, do raise your hand, and I will call upon you. I'm just going down the list so I don't miss anyone. If there isn't any questions, Maharaj. Um, would you like to close with a one round? Yeah. Mataji, uh, you, you went on mute. Uh, we can't hear you, Mataji. Uh, oh, sorry. Thank you. Okay, Ma said chanting. Okay, I I I missed what he said. I, I was trying to figure out. <laughs> Thank you, Shrimati. Okay. So it's going to be hard for me to hold the microphone chant at the same time. So let me know if you can hear me. Yes, Marge. Right now, Marge, we can hear you. Okay. This is a brand new microphone. Let's see. Good word. Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadada, Vasa, Vigora, Pandavinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama.
And if you have a good chance, it's a good thing. And if you have a good chance, it's a good thing. I think it's Very long. Very long with your mouth.
and the servant is going to be I Jai Sri Krishna, I think when you say you need to remember the day to the God of Jai Sri Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Maharaj. And thank you to all. And thank you to all the devotees for joining us. Vanchaka Pribhyascha, Kripa Sindhu Bevacha, Patita Namahamani Divya Vaishnava Bevacha Namo Namaha. Chila Prabhupada Ki. Adha Ki Chai. Jai. Andramali Swami Ki. Jai. Jai. Andramali Swami Ki. Jai. And all the devotees, I just wanted to tell everyone that tomorrow is actually Guru Maharaj's appearance day in this world to save us. Thank you for letting me sharing that, Sri Devi. I really, really am thankful to you for sharing that. Thank you so much. <laughs> she's sharing the mercy with us, Mar. So we're all very grateful. She, she's sharing the mercy with us. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we're all greedy for your mercy Mar, so that's why we are selfishly sharing the mercy <laughs> when you you ask one man he he asks and he asks him do you have any money he goes into his pocket he pulls out the insides of his pocket I'm pulling out the inside of my dirty pocket. Guru Maharaj, you are an ocean of mercy. You don't need pockets. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it's just a kind of mercy. Ravana was very kind also. So was the Rani Taki. <laughs> Please, Mara, shower us with your mercy and your blessing so that we can continue to please our spiritual master and Sri Prabhupada and Krishna. Yeah. Day six on chanting the holy names and we work together as devotees. Cooperation with other devotees and working on Krishna practices is very pleasing to the spiritual master and the Lord. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. We are so fortunate that we can get to hear your class once every two weeks. So, so blessed and fortunate. I am. I know that. <laughs> thank you. And thank yeah. you, Shridhi, for sharing Chandramali Swami's um, uh, yeah, Titi birthday. We have to push it tomorrow. Thank you so much. It's Srila Haridas Chakra's appearance day every year on yes. that day. Yes. Ah, Good to know. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Good to know. I'll mark it in my calendar from now on. <laughs> it's not on the Vaishnav calendar. If you go to the Vaishnav calendar, 
It says over there, His Holiness Chandamali Maharaj appearance day. Okay, good. Maharaj, ah. the signal is out, Maharaj. <laughs> I, think, I think they gave her too much medicine. <laughs> but Maharaj is to our benefit, Maharaj. Over the medicine is spilled over a little bit. Mm. This is uh, not feeling so well. Just you know, just going this, uh, you know, bestow your mercy on Sri Devi. She needs it. <laughs> oh, Krishna, thank you so much. I love these sessions, especially with Chandramani Swami, because we get to. Be human again with Maharaj. Really, <laughs> <laughs> you're fortunate when you tease by a spiritual master. But dear Maharaj teased us a lot. <laughs> I'm willing to get every scrap of mercy, every crumb of mercy that is thrown at me. I'm just a poor dog. So please bless me as Guru Maharaj has requested you all. Please. Yeah, I got my cues here. I'm going to ready to use them. <laughs> Uh, go ahead, Guru Maharaj. Please beat me with your shoes. Some friends might get in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what's coming up? <laughs> <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> All right. Thank so, you, Maharaj. Yeah. Thank you so much. All good to show Prabhupada. Thank you, Anasuya. I really am find it very edifying when you do the hosting. I wish you could do all of our hosting every day on my regular conference. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, Marge, what time are your classes? Is it? Same time right now. <laughs> oh, Krishna. Oh, same time. It's a clash with our Bhagavatam class. Marge, I will try. I will, if it's, if it's definitely not clashing with our temple, if I, you know, class, if I can be of any service, Marsh, let me know. <laughs> yeah, go, just talk to she might She's enlisting all of the qualified Zoom hosts. Okay. So yeah, I really find that you can, you know how to do this service really nice. Really Marsh nice. is only by your mercy. It's by the mercy of the gurus. Seriously, Marsh, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder how devotees can put up with my crap. <laughs> how come my mercy only comes out when you, you are around? <laughs> Mar, it's your potency, Mara. It's your potency. Mar. That's why I keep begging for your mercy all the time, Maharaj. No, it's just obvious. <laughs> You're like, you're like, like a, you're like a, you're like a, you're a bird in her way.